So how are we gonna figure this stuff out? The reactants we know are consumed, so they're always gonna have their rates of change with a negative sign. Products are all going to be increasing, so their rates of change are positive. And we have to go do experiments in order to figure out a rate, and then we can compare all the other rates to it. So in a particular case, you might be able to measure one of them more easily than something else. For instance, if something has a very distinctive color, you might be able to measure how much of it there is by how brilliant the color is and how much the color is changing easier than something that was a, a clear colorless item. But, you know, various things, various ways of measuring things. So if you had like this, a rate of change determined experimentally, somebody figured out that it would be easiest to measure the ammonia. So if they figure out that the rate of change for the creation of ammonia is this much, then they could come back and say, oh, this must be disappearing. So we have a change in the sign at half the rate at which this was appearing. And so you could calculate this. Which of these would we use to express the rate of a reaction? Well, then we have to be a little bit cautious with this stuff. We look for the one that has a coefficient of one, and then we just see whether it is a product or a reactant and make sure that we use the appropriate sign. So on this particular one, you would see the nitrogen has the coefficient of one. So that's the one that we would like to use but it is a reactant, so it would be negative. The course of the reaction should be a positive number, and so we would use the same number, only changing the sign. And there is, of course, one other. Let's talk about the hydrogen. We look at it, say, the change in the concentration of hydrogen over time should be three times as much as the change of nitrogen in that period of time. We could also express that as delta, the change in concentration of hydrogen, three delta T equals the change in the concentration of nitrogen over delta T. This is the way we would commonly originally write it, but this is what we will use. And you can see all we've done is change where the three is. It's an algebraic thing. The change in the concentration of hydrogen is going to be three times the negative 0.236 that we got for this, and that would mean that it was disappearing at a rate of 0.708. And then we go back and say, what was the units? Oh yes, molarity per second. This is the convention. If you're going to be writing the rate you're going to use the, the stoichiometric coefficients so that you would end up with the same rate expressed in terms of all the different chemical species. Here I have hydrogen and iodine making hydrogen iodide. Here's a one half because there's that too. And now that was it positive because it's a product. The others are both going to be negative because they are reactants. And then they just exist as is because their coefficients were one. So just in general, you would have A, this is your coefficient, and then that's whatever your stuff is, and B of B stuff going to C of C stuff and D of D stuff. So this reaction rate, if you're talking rate, these two are reactants, so they both have to be negative. The small a and b are going to be the coefficients, and so they end up in the denominator, and then you have the change in the amount of A, change in the amount of B, then these come out and they're positive because they're products and the C and D end up down here. Knowing that, they're asking what are the reactant and product rates for the Haber-Bosch process? This is just practice, really. I would look at it and say, hey, the reaction rate, I have three different things. The first one is a reactant, so it's going to have to have a negative sign. It has a coefficient, so we'll put the coefficient in the denominator, and then the change in concentration of hydrogen over time. And that has to be the same as another reactant, so it's a negative sign. The coefficient is a one, so I won't have to do anything. And I'll just write the change in nitrogen concentration over time. And then lastly, I finally have one that is a product. So it's positive, but the two has to be in the denominator and delta for the 
ammonia over time. Those all would be the same exact number. 